So that all of us can grow together. Because a rising tide, all the ships start rising. It's not just about one going up or about two going up. It's about us all going up. And please give God a hand clap of praise for all of us going up in the name of the Lord. So I just want to go back in very quickly now just do this. Do, I want to give you just a few things here. We went through here and uh, you can, most of y'all have the slides. If you don't, you can go to bit.ly slash shalom slash whatever the day's date is. But I want to go back in and we've already talked now. I just want to spend the last few minutes here about where we have been all year, all, all month. We had several whys. If you look over in your outline there, we had several whys, several eyes, ease. Last week we looked at some things. I asked you to write down yield and we looked at some things specifically about if Christ had not been born, what would that mean to the world? But I want to go back in and just end on just an L and a D today as well. So this is you probably already have seen your notes already. You were bought with the price. Do not yield yourselves to, um, to become slaves to men. And right here from NLT, I love that God paid a high price for you. Yes. So don't be enslaved by the world. I'm going to get that now. God paid a high price for you, the blood of Jesus. So don't be enslaved by the world. Don't think like the world. Don't act like the world. Don't believe like the world. Don't confess like the world. Because he paid a high price for us. That's our why that came from 1 Corinthians 7. Then the next we have from James chapter 3. And again, just, I'm just picking out one out of the eye at this point. Read this with me, please. It, the tongue, is what? Restless and evil, full of deadly poison. So we just talked about that, 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 that the, the most deadly weapon that's made known to mankind is the tongue. And we just talked about the danger of the tongue. Please read this with me, please. A person's tongue can give you the taste of his heart. Yeah. Keep on going. Be careful with your words. Once they are said, they can only be forgiven, not forgotten. Every married couple in here knows the words. You, you, you may forgive them, but every now and then. Okay. Okay. Everything around Christmas. And all of a sudden, something happened with Christmas night. You, and you, thought, and you thought you had buried it. And all of a sudden, did a throw on you, came back out of there. They, 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 they can be forgiven. Can't be forgotten. Read this, please. Words are under your control until you speak them. But you come under their control once you have spoken them. Yeah, yeah. So as long as I can say it, I'm controlling. But once it gets out there, now, now I got to deal with the ramification of what I said. So last week we talked about the whole idea from here about, from, I'm sorry, from third Sunday was about, about, about Peter fishing, entering to the ships. And you know that, that, that was a story it says at this point, actually, it said the master who told all night. Let me read this with me for this important point. Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And this came back that after Jesus entered the ship, started teaching, and told them to go back out, let down that net, and they end up having this huge haul that their nets began to break. Then last week we talked about so the Jesus was reason for the season. And we talk at the, at the name of Jesus, every knee is down about, even Jesus and Santa Paul. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So that we talk about this last night. So the question is, when somebody says to you, did you have a good Christmas? What do they really mean? What'd you get? That's what I said about. What'd you get? And, you know, so, and so we as believers can't allow our, Chris, our, our the, the joy of Christmas to be minimized to something that came from Mason. It can't be minimized by merchandise. It has got to be the focus on who our Lord was. And so really the real question was, what do we accept? And we say it right now that Christ gave us access, gave the world access to, and we accept these three things. Hope, holiness, and heaven. That had Jesus not been born, no hope. Had Jesus not been born, couldn't be holy. Had Jesus not been born, could not go to heaven. So hope, holiness, and heaven. Then today I want to go back in and share just a few things here as well. You, you, um, you remain, see, let's just read this together very quickly. 1 Peter 5, 5 through 7, and I have an L and a D, one L, and I want to focus on one D, and we'll finish up here. So let's read this together. Hold yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, 
under the mighty hand of God so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Here's our hero right here. Read this with me, please. This is from Amphac Classic. Lower yourself in your own estimation. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. What are we saying here? So he's saying, if, I, if we really want to go back and have more of greater manifestation, it's time for us to now humble ourselves. See, humble comes from the, from the Greek word that simply means empty. So if I'm empty, the Holy Spirit can fill me up with his wisdom, can fill me up with his direction, can fill me up with his insight. But if I'm full, there's no way to get in. in. It, 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 it's, it's almost like on, on, on Christmas dinner. So, uh, there's some folk in here, I know it was none of you all because you all don't walk in the spirit of gluttony. But there were people around the table, you knew they were full. You, you had turkey coming out of the eyes and they were still eating right there. So they, 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 they're all that full. And so what's going to happen, many of us are full of our own ideas and full of our own desires. And the Holy Spirit has no room to rule, move. Because we're already full. So lower yourself in your own estimation. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. I love this right here from C.S. Lewis. Read this with me, please. Humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. Isn't that good? It's not saying, you know, it's not saying I'm just a nobody trying to tell somebody about somebody that can save me. No, no. It's not, it's not just a worm as I. No, I said, no, I know who I am in the Lord. I'm righteous and I'm redeemed and I'm raised. And I'm going to think of myself less. That's what he knows about. That I'm going to think about you more than I think of me. Think about other people more than I think about myself. That's what humility is all about. So this idea of whoever exhausts himself will be humble. Whoever humbles himself shall be exalted there. And this, I love what the white boy just said right here. Read this, please. God sends no one away except the empty, except those who are full of themselves. Glory to God. Why? Because they're so full of themselves, you can't, the Holy Spirit can't move in there as well. So here's the point. Now, 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 so let me just, here's your D right here. I'm give you this one D. Read this with me, please. Do respect, given, and yield to a council of ministers and spiritual guides of the church. What is this? The, I, I'm telling you, the most important assignment on earth is those of us who've been entrusted with making sure we are sharing to make sure your souls are guarded. That, that, that's the most important work. The most important work on earth is sharing God's word, rightly dividing, so you have revelation and application for transformation. That you get revelation so you can now have application so there can be some transformation that comes on in life. So what, what's our role? This, this, so, so this, this is how my wife and I see it. That's what we're doing. When things are going on, you're going through some things, we're just trying to share some things, and, and maybe you're going this way, we're going to say, well, this is the way the Holy Spirit says. Or maybe sometime you've been down. And I'll tell you, there's never a time when everybody's ministry is going to be down at the same time. Somebody's going to be up, and somebody's going to be able to help us, and somebody can raise us up. We will not all be down at the same time because God is too good. Somebody's going to be able to help raise us up in the name of the Lord. This is how we see ourselves. We see right now that we know right now about what manifestation is, ABCs. Please enter. We know what it's like right now. Have Shaq and me, Shaq and a man, Negro. Please enter. Our role is to make sure we learn all we can. To make sure you can now enter into the, into the joy of prosperity, the door of abundance, the door of more than enough, and the door of favor. Can you give God one more hand up right here? That's our role right here. That's our role. And we take it seriously. When we spend time studying and being in the Word, so by the time we get here, you get some revelation for application that can lead to transformation. This is what happens right now. We know, now, here's the point. So the, the point is, it doesn't make any sense for somebody to preach what they don't know. I'm telling you, by the time we get here, we've already gone through the fire. See, we, I can, we can talk about the fire of furnace because we've been through the fire and then it came out not smelling like smoke. We can talk about how good God is because somebody here knows that God is a good God and somebody knows that God's a great God and somebody knows that God's in a way out of the way. 
So as we leave you all, y'all can meet somebody else. Because yeah. y'all are reaching for we'll never reach. Yes. And so at some point, so that's so we, 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 we honor and give respect to those in ministry and those that are spiritual guys as well. And I love this part. You can't read this well. It says counsel right here. It's encouraging us to follow the solution that matches the that that that, 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 that magnifies the glory of God and the good of others. So we, when we get counsel. It's saying that now, here's the solution that's going to now help me glorify God, counsel. We, all we want to do is help you pursue God's best. We, we were talking about the other week, uh, and, and Brother Gary brought this up about this idea of pursuing God. Please read this with me from, from Proverbs 19, 20 and 21. Listen to advice and accept discipline. And at the end, you will be counted among the wise. Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. And here's the point I need to tell you about this. Everybody, let me see the first point right here. Everybody gets counsel, but it's not always good. Now, point number two. You are not, as a believer, to get counsel from people who are not right with God. Right. Okay. You trying to get a stay right with God? <laughs> they are not right with God? And you going to listen to them? They, 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 you got to have somebody who's going to end up making sure you're going, they're going to be around and help like this, and like this, and like this. You don't need a bad thing. See, you don't need to go to the person who knocked you down. <laughs> Give you the, 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 the godly counsel, godly counsel. And, and, and so, so pursuing God's best. And this idea, how you pursue God's best right here, this power here, I love this. We pursue God by trusting Jesus. Then we honor God. And then we help others. Isn't that beautiful? We trust God. We trust, we trust Him. As we start trusting Him, we start honoring Him. Then in turn, we start helping others. See, well, here's our point. We want to start trying to help others. For we trust in God. See, I, I gotta have some. I gotta have something in the kitty, not that kitty. I gotta have something in the kitty, the spiritual kitty, so I can go out and help somebody else. Because I'm not careful. I'm not, I'm not gonna have enough spiritual uh, spiritual empowerment to help somebody else make his dear way. We were in grad school in Chapel Hill. Had this one friend who was, you know how when folks just get saying it's on fire, it's on fire. So he was like, I'm just gonna go save everybody. I'm going to the gas station and save folks. I'm going to, I'm going to the club and save everybody. Save people. And we said, now you may not want to go to the club this year. <laughs> you, know, you just got saved like you yesterday. <laughs> that boy, seriously, this boy goes to the club. They got to carry him out because he goes there and gets so drunk himself. So you, gotta, you, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta trust first for you to somebody else. All right, so, so in due time, God's gonna exhaust you. Due time, you gotta know God. You got, hey man, ain't that ready to be exalted? Yeah. I say, ain't that ready to be exalted? He says you're ready to live in the States. God says in due time, so don't, don't think God forgot about you. Don't think God turned his back on you. In due time, you're going to be exalted. And I, I, I think, oh, yeah, read this one here. Oh, please, oh, please, I just love this. Read this. Only God is able to humble us without humiliating us and to exalt us without flattering us. That's a beautiful. God's not humbling us to humiliate us. So the point is, we get up. See, here's a real, real humility comes when we volunteer to empty ourselves. I, the worship we sing, I give myself away. I, I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away so you can. I want to be empty, God, because I want to be full of your mercy. I want to be full of your grace. I want to be full of your wisdom. So I give myself away so you can now in turn raise me up and, I, and He exalts us. Without sadness. And this is the last one right here. Just read this with me, please. And, I can get, you know, and you can leave the slides later. Read this. Deepest affection. God watches over you very carefully. Isn't that beautiful? Yes, yes. Keep going. Cast your cares, all anxieties, all worries, all concerns. Come on. Once. Don't keep casting the same care over and over every day. <laughs> Cast him. God, I was concerned about this. You got it now. I was worried about this. You got it now. I was anxious about this. You got it now. Why? Because God is carefully watching over us. Isn't that beautiful? Carefully 
Order your steps in the word carefully. 